our host, the world-renowned Christine Enville, an IFBB professional, three times world champion, a mentor, an icon, and of course, a founding co-owner of the best supplements money can buy, International Protein. In this episode, we talk about the history of Amino Charge WPI. It's International Protein's bestseller and there's very good reason why. Find out what makes this product superior and how it improves your recovery. All right, Christine, today I would like to speak about Amino Charge WPI. It's one of your best sellers. In fact, it is your best seller. Absolutely. In fact, the chocolate flavor is your best seller. Correct. The, the chocolate flavor is only just a touch ahead of the vanilla. It is really, really close. No, I'd go no. chocolate all day, every day. But um, look, the, it, the taste is what International Protein is concentrated on for a lot of their products, and it does taste great. But surely it's not the reason why it's one of the biggest WPIs out there, one of the one of the amazing sellers, especially in the communities like the bodybuilding circle. Funnily that you say we concentrate on the taste, that is um, that's actually the secondary. We actually concentrate on the nutritional side of it and what's in the product. I do know that. And a reason for being, <laughs> but we obviously insist that they must taste good because, again, being a, from a competitive background in bodybuilding, I would spend up to 10 months a year on a diet, restricted and not able to eat a lot of treats and things like that. So obviously protein making up a large, say protein powder, making up a large proportion of the protein that I ate, I wanted it to be something that would tastes good and tastes good for everybody. So, you know, there's nothing worse than, um, you know, being on a restricted diet, having to eat protein and like having to really kind of force that stuff down because it's really unpalatable. So nutrition was always number one for us. Mm -hmm. And it just because of um, my background as a food scientist in product development. So I'm not, not a biochemist who just throws a whole bunch of things together and doesn't consider the taste. You know, I always was very mindful of, um, you know, flavors working well together and what actually tasted good. So that obviously is the byproduct. The main reason obviously with WPI is what's in it, but I'm just going to take a a little step back because we want to talk about the history of um, Mm -hmm. amino charge WPI. So it wasn't our first product launched. It didn't launch. I could actually be wrong here, but I think it was 2009. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like, I think maybe like with children after your first child, you stop counting. So Synergy was our first product. Um, and um, it's energy and carbs. And we actually had another product called Triface or Triway because it had three different types of whey in it. So it had the whey peptides, it had WPI, and it had whey concentrate. And the reason I had that was because you had to get that immediate influx of proteins coming from the whey peptides. You then had your WPI, which made up the bulk of it. And then we had a little bit of PC because the time release on that is a little bit longer than WPI. And there's a two-hour window of opportunity post-workout where your body is more receptive to taking up proteins, carbs. So I wanted to have something that was feeding into your body over that entire period of time. Mm -hmm. Now, serious bodybuilders got it and most people didn't get it. They were just like, no, we just want WPI. So I was kind of stuck with a product which was technically better, but people just didn't understand it. So that's why we ended up ultimately launching Amino Charge WPI because people were looking for that specific profile. They didn't want the extra fat and lactose that came in with that little bit of PC. And also, you know, they wanted something, again, that was just very quickly digested. And it was also very well known. Australia, other companies had done a massive job of marketing WPIs. So when I went to launch it or develop it, I wanted to create something that was different. So not just, okay, let's put some WPI in a tub, flavor it up. That's very, very easy to do. But I wanted to make it something which was even more specific or more useful post-workout, which is when most people should be taking a WPI. And for some people who only take protein post-workout, then, you know, that's that's the protein to take. But if you look at the nutritional profile, the amino acid profile of a WPI, it's very strong in its branch chains. About a quarter of the amino acids come from your branch chains, which is your isoleucine, leucine, and valine. But it's a little bit weak in your glutamine and your arginine, which are two very, very important amino acids for recovery. So does that mean you need your amino drink on top of it? Uh, yeah, in, in the strictest sense, if you're, you've are you got access or, or you want to be performing at the absolute ultimate, the amino, the complete aminos, what's different about that is that majority of those aminos are either in free form or hydrolyzed peptide form, which means they, they digested like instantaneously, basically. Like WPI, you still have a 10, 15 minute 
period until your body starts to break that down and use it, which to take that during a workout is kind of uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Most people probably wouldn't choose to do that. It's also kind of milky and nobody really wants that when they're working out, whereas the complete aminos is a more of a, I I call it a water-based because the the aminos whilst coming from casein, coming from milk, they aren't milky. Like It's more like a cordial with all of the aminos. So what that does is it basically provides your body with with an amount of amino acids which helps to protect it while you're working out but there's not really enough to do significant muscle growth so it's 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 a recovery product it's a help you get from one workout to the next workout but it's not going to have a lot to do with actually synthesizing your muscle so you do really need to take both um, you'll feel the difference if you take both but you know if you had to just do one or the other then most people would probably take the protein mm-hmm. because it's giving the calories and it's giving them the major amount of protein so you know you a 10 gram serving you know which is your complete aminos versus like a 40 gram serving obviously is going to be different in how much protein you get amino charge wpi has about you know 35 grams of protein which for a person who weighs above you know anywhere above 150 pounds and eating five meals a day and they're breaking their protein up evenly throughout that period, then 35 grams isn't an unrealistic amount that you would need to have. So you're, you know, you're getting everything that you need in that one hit, um, basically in the amino charge WPI. But just coming back to what I put into it, um, the glutamine and the arginine were very, very important because that was where I felt like on the amino acid profile, it kind of was weak compared to something like casein. But casein, except when it's hydrolyzed, like in complete aminos, is traditionally a slow digesting protein. So just to not to not confuse people there, casein in its native form is very, very slow to digest, but has an amazing amino acid profile for recovery because it has more glutamine and arginine than a WPI. That obviously goes into the complete aminos, but that's at a much lower level because it's more of a you know, quick recovery protection, feed the muscle while you're training, not an actual food source, um, high source of calories, high sort like, you know, major amount of protein. So we decided we would fortify or charge up with extra aminos, hence the name amino charged WPI, Mm -hmm. to bring that profile up so that it was more suited to recovery and made the product just to me made it a much stronger profile amino acid profile so it was perfect for recovery and as i said that's when most people you know if they only take protein once a day that's when they should be taking it is post workout and that's what amino charge wpi is designed for so that's um that's part of it the other part as i said it's very very high in branch chains and one of the the most critical branch chains for recovery is leucine and in each serving of amino charge wpi we have 3.6 grams of leucine now that's really important because you need a minimum of 3 grams to actually kick off the muscle synthesis process so if you get 2 grams of leucine the process for growing muscle is much slower it's almost like it's not like it um, goes on a on a gradient it's like there's nothing and then you hit that 3 gram mark and then it then it starts to um, it, it, almost like triggers a, a, a response within the body and then creates that process and, and makes that go. So a lot of the proteins on the market nowadays, I see them dropping the serving size down to 30 grams. They're not getting that three grams of leucine in that serving. So that's why we've stuck with 40 grams, giving you that right amount of leucine so that post-workout you get that process, get that synthesis, muscle synthesis process going, which is absolutely critical. As I said, we did put a little bit of the peptides in. And again, that's because they do get in so quickly. So if you haven't had your amino recovery or complete aminos, as I should call it now, um, if you haven't had those or you don't use those, then we still have got, we've got you covered basically with the peptides. Peptides also um, stimulate the liver to produce growth factors, which then cause more muscle growth. So I feel that that's very important to have that in there as well as just having the WPI. So we put a little bit of that in there as well. Just looking at the macros, you know, each serving has got, you know, 0.3 gram of fat, which is, you know, next to nothing. It has 1.4 gram of carbs, which is coming from the naturally occurring lactose and the flavors. Obviously the flavoring goes on a, a carbohydrate base, but to put that in context, that's six calories. That's, so that's very low lactose. Low lactose. Well, the lactose is 0.3 grams per serve, and we find that um, makes most, it easy to digest. I guess doesn't it? Well, it it or, just isn't in there to yeah. to give you a problem. So most people who have lactose intolerance who try the amino charged WPI tell us that they have no issue with it. So it's like. Mm-hmm. Very, very rare that people still have an issue because there's just not anything in there to cause the body to ha- to have to break it down. 
that 0.3 gram just goes through without too much of an issue. So it is, as I said, it's really there for the protein. It doesn't have much else in it. So when you're on a, a low calorie diet, obviously you're not getting excessive calories for the protein that you're taking in, as opposed to something like superior weight, which has a higher natural fat and lactose content. So, you know, a serving of each, there's more calories, obviously in the superior way and a little bit less protein. So if you're just after that protein, you know, as I said, particularly people who are on low calorie or who just want to put protein into their diet to help them recover and they don't really want to start to gain a whole bunch of extra weight or if you are trying to grow muscle, then you'll be putting other calories. You'll probably be putting extreme carbs with it in your recovery shake. You mentioned uh, leucine before. Do, do I remember correctly that you've got lysine in it as well? Well, lysine is an, another amino acid, which is naturally like as a dairy protein, it does contain all of the essential, not sorry, all of the amino acids, period, as in right. there's essentials, non-essentials, and there's branch chains and lysine is just another amino acid it's so it it does have everything like it it doesn't just there's not anything that it doesn't have if that makes sense okay yeah which is naturally occurring in the product so we're only adding the glutamine and arginine that's not saying they aren't in there Mm -hmm. naturally they just Mm -hmm. at a i guess a proportionately lower level than what might be in a different protein like a casein okay so yeah if every, every protein has its own unique amino acid profile i guess you should say so certain things are strong in certain ones you know, glutamine and arginine are also very good for muscle sparing. So they're called well, what we call gluconeogenic amino acids. So if you're at a point in time where you need energy, you need obviously glycogen for energy, glucose for energy, and you're dieting and your body isn't getting that from the food, then it will take those amino acids and turn them into energy. Right. So it, almost like the sacrificial lamb. So if you don't have enough of those in your protein and your body takes those, then it actually creates a situation where that protein is now potentially hasn't got enough of those amino acids to create new protein. I'm getting a little bit sciencey here on you. Um, and I'm trying to keep up. Y- yeah. You are. You're actually doing a really good job, Ash. Normally you'd be just kind of like glazing, whatever. Glazing over. Yeah. <laughs> But, um, but that's, I guess, the nutritional side of it. Just in terms of the history again, as I said, we, we launched it, um, you know, due to, really due to demand. You know, people were kind of saying you don't have anything in this space. And as much as I was kind of saying, oh, you know, there's so many things around, you know, I decided to make something which was a little bit different. But it so quickly became our top seller. Like it really, really was something that obviously did strike a chord with people. Um, I remember being at different competitions, sampling it out and just the feedback that we were getting because it was, um, you know, it was light. It wasn't heavy. You know, as I said, post-workout, you want something that's maybe a little sweet because your insulin's high and you're normally kind of craving something like that. So we we made it so that it, had, it wasn't too sweet, but it was definitely not tasteless you know but no but it was a fairly light drink so people could get it down easy and not feel like they were going to like upset their stomach or or you know it's all kind of hanging around in your mouth after you've had it which is sometimes what happens if you've had a particularly heavy workout you you know you, you get a little bit dry going to the shows and getting that feedback that people just absolutely loved it they loved the profile uh, as you said the chocolate you know it's ever so slightly number one seller over the vanilla banana used to be third but caramel popcorn which is one of the newer flavors has kind of swooped in and taken third place mm-hmm. as a and, and that is actually a very strong flavor like it's it's it, it's a little bit out of character of the rest of the range it's it is very very strong it's, it's very delicious mm. well my experience i've tried all three i, I prefer the chocolate but uh, again exactly what you said it's a light protein it's easy it, yeah. it tastes good and it's easy to take yeah it would depend on the product but a lot of WPIs because it is a thin protein people tend to put you know stabilizers in there to help give them a little bit more body ah, okay. because they because some people like a thick drink and you know it's like your caseins and your custards and some people like a thin drink as I said this is designed for post-workout where mm. most of the time you don't want something that's too thick and claggy so we've left all of that out but also because when you're post-workout you want that protein in quickly like that's the whole point get it in there get that recovery process started if you start putting stabilizers vegetable gums into that protein essentially that binds in your stomach and it actually slows down the digestion of the protein so you're not getting it as you might be taking a wpi but you're not getting it at the same speed and you've got a bit of quality protein to start with right correct and where yeah. does that protein come from <laughs> you, you want you make me say it because you're is it the country where you come from ash possibly possibly it's <laughs> new zealand cows now it's grass-fed um, the happiest we, cows in the world they are the happiest cows in the world yeah <laughs> no um sheep jokes here <laughs> But cows, I, I was about, I was cows, about yeah. to, to make one. The, the cows are happy because they get left alone because <laughs> of all the sheep. Not all the time. It's been the odd article in the newspaper. But anyway. <laughs> we digress. <laughs> 
those poor cows. But um, but no, we um, coming back to the flavour and the quality and, and and that type of thing. If you start with a good base, it's very very easy to make something taste good. We've always gone with the grass fed before. People were kind of trending on it being grass fed. Like it was actually more because it was cross flow micro filtered, which is a particular process that's used to make whey protein isolate and it leaves more of the, the, the cofactors and the good stuff and it doesn't kind of strip out everything other than just purely the protein. So there's a lot of other factors in protein. You know, when we talk about WPI, there's actually like five different subsections of subtypes of that and different processes strip out different ones. So you only have like one particular type and they all do different things in the body. I'm not going to go into that because I, I guess in a way there's still a lot of research being done around it. I know a company was looking at all the different strands and the different, you know, was one better for satiety, was one better for muscle growth. But um, unfortunately I ended up stopped making the protein at all. So I don't really know where the research ended up, but that was actually an Australian company when they were making WPI, but now they don't, like no Australian company is making WPI in Australia. Recently a couple have um, started doing that. I believe some may even be claiming to be grass-fed, but we've looked at them and they are horrible. Like this, you know, three-quarters froth, no liquid, just not something that you would want to drink and it's a real shame because I would think it would be great to see Australia produce a um, a good quality grass-fed WPI. So hopefully they'll keep working on that, but at, as at this stage, no, they don't They don't have one, hence why it's not a fully – it's Australian-made product but not made using Australian material, unfortunately. Well, I mean, it is what it is. You, you yeah. guys source the best ingredients from wherever that place might be around the world and that's the right thing to do. Yeah, 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 but but athletes. yeah, but grass fed. As I said, back you know, back when we started using it, you know, ten ten or more years ago, um, or even in the other products, we've always had that in there. It wasn't you know, people weren't kind of conscious of that. They weren't talking about that, and that's something that we've definitely seen change in the last kind of three to five years, where grass fed is becoming more important. Obviously, you think about you know we're we're concerned about our nutrition, mm-hmm. but it makes much more sense that if the nutrition of the source material, which is your cow, is stronger, then obviously it's going to have better quality milk. So therefore, the protein that's produced from that is better quality with some um, you know higher levels of vitamin D and beta carotene, which are like, super important for your immune system. So, you know, that's that's part of that. They also found that um, some of the cu- the cows in America that were fed off of different, um, I guess, you know, dry, right. you know st- st- grains and yeah. straws, that, um, the amino acid profile was actually affected. We talk about the amino acid profile, but, again, that's, you know, that was on that one batch of milk um, over a period of time when they weren't fed a good variety or a good quality of, um, of the, the grain then it was starting to change the amino acid profile or so I, so I so I was told, so I've heard. I remember being in China and I wanted to buy chocolate milk because the cow looked so happy on the, on the um, chocolate milk packaging. But I just knew it was lies. I knew it was all packaging and I thought, no, I'm not going to drink that. No uh, only a marketer <laughs> would look at the picture on the, on the thing. and <laughs> had this big smile on his face, but no, I just couldn't bring myself to do it. But, yeah, that's... Yeah, that's interesting. I think from, you know, I actually lived on a farm at one point and seeing how the cows actually live and the grass growth, like literally in a week you'd get, I think that, a foot of growth. I'd, and actually at certain times of the year I'd have to jump on the ride-on lawnmower two or three times a week just to keep it Help under control. Help the cows out. Just to keep it under control. So um, if in the right parts of New Zealand they really do get good feed yeah and and that's i mean like you know you know we worry about our nutrition mm. where our food comes from and their nutrition is you know it is equally important you know starting raw material start what they go in what what comes out and then as i said that follows all the way through where it, you know it tastes better has a nice creamy rich flavor and then that's much much easier to um to make the product taste really good as far as the digestibility there's no like it, it doesn't you know it, there's no scientific proof that, you know, grass fed should digest better than other. That's why I put that down to the stabilizers. But it is something that we hear time and time again with our product that it just settles so much better in people's stomachs than what other proteins do or other WPIs do. And and I as I said, I'm always at a bit of a loss to that because other than that stabilizer factor, theoretically there should be no difference. But um, you know, there there often is. But that is something, you know, the mixability of the product, the digestibility 
is always, um, you know, always very, very good. And um, that's, again, you know, what makes it a much, much easier product to use. As I said, you know, it, it was designed for post-workout. I'm sure people are using it at multiple times a day, especially where they're trying to get as much protein as they possibly can for a, a lower calorie count, you know, when you're prepping for a competition, those type of, of situations. So it is, um, you know, obviously on all of our packaging, we have to put that it's, um, you know, not suitable for kids under 16 years of age, but that is a, a Australian in law that as soon as you add an amino acid to a product you have to put that warning on even though there is no scientific evidence that there is anything wrong with eating this you know level of free form amino acids added to product but that's just the Australian government because we do get asked that question a lot like why why isn't it suitable for kids under 16 why is that warning on there and it's it's actually the addition of the glutamine and the arginine which are um, non-animal sourced, they're actually, you know, vegan sourced amino acids, you know, abs- you know, absolutely part of normal food. But in Australia, that flags us to have to say that you can't give it to kids under that age bracket. So it, I, I believe that it is. It, it's um, unfortunately with, with most things, re, um, regulators don't come from sport background. They don't even understand necessarily sport or nutrition. And yet they um, mm-hmm. they put down regulations because it's kind of like a fear factor and, and you know, just in case. But as I keep saying to people, you know, these products and products like these have been on the market for, you know, over not this our particular product, but obviously products with, you know, amino acids or creatines and different things have been on the market for over 20 years, 30 years. There is so much evidence now of use, but for the regulations to kind of catch up and go, oh, hey, yeah, they are actually safe because people are using them without issue and actually getting benefit from them, it's it's all a little bit too much for them to comprehend. So, but, you know, as I said, if um, we have other products in the range which carry the warning, I guess, because they are sports products, but they, you know, just basically are food products um, so that we have alternatives if people are very worried about that or, you know, people who are pregnant or lactating who are concerned about something which has added amino acids even though like I say they're things that you find naturally in food anyway. So do you do you think that this particular product amino charge WPI is sort of like a really good starting point for a lot of people? I know it's post workout, but people that are just getting into protein, do you think it's an easy choice for them? It would depend. I, I actually would say the superior way is actually kind of more of a, I guess I call it a beginner's protein. Okay, because you don't necessarily start at like the peak of where you're going. So it's very recognisable. So I dare say that they probably are so many people that are starting on this product and as I said it's recognisable you know people must trust it because it's you know we sell so much of this product Um, but for me personally if I was a younger person just getting into it or I wasn't wasn't super serious, but I, I knew I needed to get a little bit of extra protein and I didn't have a lactose intolerance problem. I probably would start on Superior Way or I would start on Synergy because that is still my favorite product mm-hmm. as far as the blend. We'll talk about Synergy on another time, but um, as I said, it's, it's, you're not going to go wrong. You know, mm-hmm. you're taking amino charged WPI, you absolutely are not going to go wrong. You know, as I said, post workout, fantastic. If you're looking at it for something like an in between meal snack, it's not designed for it's that. The wrong product. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I'd rather people, you know, take the take the right product. So just because it's our most popular, I think again, because a lot of people only use protein post workout. Mm-hmm. So if you put all of those people together, that's potentially who's buying it. And then if you decide you need another one, people tend to just use the product that they already have. And the good thing is, a lot of the right kind of people are using this product. So you've got a lot of it's a it's a popular product, but it's popular in the right areas, the right circles, as I said earlier. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, absolutely. maybe it's the top-down theory where a lot of people are buying it. If he's so, using it, I want to use it. Yeah. And that's right. It's the the emulation. I mean, I think probably all of our sponsored athletes would take it mm-hmm. 100%, um, but obviously they would take other proteins as well because they have access to that. So they will take, you know, something, you know, synergy at night time, you know, maybe between meals and might be taking some of our plant power product as well mm-hmm. as people are switching on to um, – onto using a little bit more plant-based as well as just dairy. So yeah. that's the history. As I said, not our first product. Definitely dominates our, our sales, all of the WPIs do. And, and I said that's that's obviously a, um, the popularity of people who are just wanting wanting that protein. On the export side of things, the superior way actually sells a lot more. Okay. But that's just a that's just a fun fact. Okay, so for any of our listeners that are using Amino Charge WPI, um, do us a favour. Jump onto wherever you buy it from and give it a review. 
Yeah, because um, it is obviously really great for other consumers to read your comments about how you're finding the product. And if you're using it regularly, um, that would be a little bit of currency for us that we'd really appreciate. That's right, yeah. What do you love about it? Because it's easy for us to be biased. But um, thank you very much, Christine. No was, worries, uh, Ash. an interesting listen. Thank you. Words of wisdom. If you like what you've heard, recognise that these tips, they're free. So show your support by becoming a loyal international protein customer by jumping online, hunt our product down and hit that buy now button. So once again, like, share and subscribe to our podcast so we can continue to bring you these episodes from our one and only Aussie muscle guru, three times world champion, Christine Enville.